did you almost die? Had friends over playing video games. A pipe burst and gas was pouring into the house, but we couldn't smell it downstairs. My dad noticed and got us all out of the house. Fire chief got there and took a reading and level was so high he forbade anyone from going in. He said, it's a good thing no one rang the doorbell because they can cause a spark, which would have ignited everything. We had pizza on the way. Delivery guy showed up five minutes after fire department. Okay, so I was getting my teeth cleaned and I get nitrous oxide because I have so many exposed roots. Well, my hygienist at the time was this lovely lady from Minnesota. Kind of flaky, but super sweet, talked about her family all the time. So I'm in the chair and she hooks up my mask and away we go. I actually fell asleep, except not so much. Turns out Barb had forgotten to turn the oxygen on and had been feeding me straight nitrous. She only noticed because I started gasping for air while unconscious. So that's how I almost died at the dentist. I never saw Barb again, but I tell you, that was the best nap of my life. Saving a younger friend from drowning, he panicked and almost took me out. As a swift and floodwater rescue tech, I'll break your nose. If you seem pure panic and not listening. A broken nose is better than two dead bodies. My brother has a depressing story as well around two young friends and both drowning due to one freaking out. Teach scuba and one of the things in Rescue Diver is to have something for the victim to grab. My instructor told us later that a freshly drowned person was revivable, but two people on the bottom were both dead. Did a scuba lesson on recovering and considered doing rescue and recovery diving. But honestly, don't think I'm up for what the even more dangerous options in water. Major respect to you. Scuba is easier than unassisted though. Drowning people don't want to go underwater and you can breathe underwater. So if they suddenly panic after you've approached and made contact, you're trained to just deflate and go under them then surface from behind. Surface freakouts are much easier to deal with than divers underwater panicking and trying to bolt. In the 90s, when I was a little kid, my family was on vacation in the Caucasus and civil war broke out. We were walking on the road and I went too far ahead alone. Car stopped, window rolled down, and a machine gun muzzle pointed at my face. My mom ran ahead, grabbed me, and fell into the bush on the shoulder. The car went on. We were going into the mountains to a sanctuary. I don't entirely know how we got back home. MRSA infection in the disc on my lower spine between L5 and S1. Showed up two days after a cortisone shot, but the hospital said it was from something else. Was in hospital 25 days multiple emergency surgeries. I worked for a doctor who did these in-house and other procedures, and it 100% made me not trust medical facilities, cleanliness, and sterilization procedures. Had about 20 patients all come down with the same gut infection. Coincidentally, the same patients who came in for endoscopy procedures the same day. When I was 13, I got thrown off a horse into a barbed wire fence. As I was in the air, I could see where my trajectory was taking me and just remember wondering if I'd catch my neck on the wire and be killed instantly or maybe lose an eye to the barbs. Incredibly, I landed legs first and got some damn impressive lacerations and the wind solidly knocked out of me, but no major damage. I got damn lucky. Was backwoods camping in Yellowstone and if I hadn't considered for 30 seconds if I really needed to get up and go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, I would have walked out of my tent head first into a brown bear, which I heard before leaving and found tracks of next to my tent in the morning. Spookiest moment of my life in hindsight. Yellowstone as well. I was walking alone on a small path and came around a bend to see the road. On that road was a ranger shouting at me and waving his arms and a group of people surrounding him. I looked to my left and there was a brown bear eating berries not 20 feet from me. Bout pissed myself slowly walking back to the road. Luckily, he was happy with his berries. I was snorkeling. I had my other stuff stored on a rock by the water about 3 meters high. When I got out, I decided to climb straight up. Almost at the top, the rock I was hoisting myself up on came off and I fell back first onto the coral. If a friendly wave hadn't come in, I would have broken my back at least. Oh my god, you must have been so thankful for that wave. Have you ever watched the movie Blue Crush about an injured surfer? 
If so, did it scare you? Underwater versus on a cliff, but still an outside beach type danger. Just wondering. In high school, I was late for class coming back from grabbing lunch. As I was speed walking from the car and also cramming a sandwich down my throat, I started choking halfway from the parking lot to the closest building. I dropped the sandwich and started running. I ran into the first building, which was the band building, and it was completely empty. Ran to the next building and the first two classrooms were locked slash empty. I finally made it to the back hallway and I burst into a physics class where one of my good friends happened to be sitting in. I was purple and red and about to pass out. I pointed to my throat and my buddy jumped over the table and immediately gave me the Heimlich. Five pumps in and it came out, probably two plus minutes without breathing. Coincidentally, I recently helped him get a job at the company I work at, so I finally feel like I found a way to repay him LOL. I was going to comment this is literally how I almost died choking on granola and peanut butter. It created some kind of cement in my mouth and I tried to swallow a lot at once. Started choking really really bad, ran around my empty house panicking to try and find my phone. But I was getting red and dizzy, found my phone to call my GF or 911. But luckily, I cleared my throat before I had to start dialing. I just sat on my kitchen floor in awe that I almost freaking died from choking on peanut butter and granola. I've done really stupid shit on skis, fallen down large cliffs, skied in avi prone terrain. I've done dumb shit with guns and got a bullet hole in my loose fitting pants from being stupid. Drove a turbocharged Subaru, like a maniac when I was a teenager, but granola and peanut butter almost freaking killed me. Eat slowly, kids. Me and my friend were on our way into the city. Her car hydroplaned, and we flipped six times and hit a light pole. We were both fine, but her car was totaled. We were lucky to have people stop and help, as when we landed upside down, I couldn't open my door, so I ended up having to be pulled out through the passenger window. As scary as it was, I was mostly angry because the paramedics were only there for 10 minutes at most, and all they did was check our blood pressure and heart rate and then went on their way. I'm bad at explaining things, so if the paramedic part is confusing, please DM me. I can also DM photos of the car if needed. Oh my god. What were you thinking when that was happening? That must have lasted for 15 plus seconds, but felt like minutes. I somehow remember reading that when our adrenaline goes up, our memory recording speeds up. So we are remembering at 120 FPS, for example, instead of our usual 32 FPS. Then, when we play back the memory, it looks like slow motion because our brains have saved such more data during a potentially traumatic event. Honestly, it felt like everything was in slow motion. I remember us starting to slide and her telling me to hold on. We ended up hitting the curb on my side and I remember her yelling at me to close my eyes but I kept them open long enough to see every flip, watch the windshield break and hearing my side window break. I managed to keep a hold of my phone the whole time. The panic didn't really hit me at first because I was more focused on trying to calm her down. The shock didn't really hit me until a couple hours after I got back to my house. Every now and then I'll still get nightmares about it, but I've mostly come to peace with the fact that it wasn't our fault. I hydroplaned on black ice once, or slid out. I'm not sure if hydroplane is the right word for when it's ice. But regardless, I was doing like 40-45 on a two-lane country road that was pretty curvy and hilly, and when I go to veer right at the crest of a hill, I could just feel the slide initiating. Next thing you know, I'm fully perpendicular with the road and occupying both lanes. I correct it, and just as I'm momentarily straight in my lane, a car passes going the other way. Then I'm fully horizontal with my passenger side leading. I overcorrect back and then I'm fully horizontal with the driver's side leading and all I can do is watch as I'm sliding into a telephone pole that is directly in the trajectory of my driver door. In my memory, that moment is frozen in time in my head. I had so much time to look at it happening before it happened. Then I impacted 
and all I feel is raining glass and cold air before the van tips sideways as I slid the rest of the way driver side down. Once the van came to a stop, I just took a visual inventory of everything, and to my horror, the headliner is coated in red liquid. I hurriedly checked my arms and the legs first, and they were fine. But then I immediately panicked and patted down my head and neck, but shockingly, my hands were clean again. And then I saw it. On the floor by the pedals was an empty bottle of red cream soda. I was so relieved that I started laughing about it and was still laughing in shock and relief when I opened the passenger door and climbed out to inspect my surroundings. Broken telephone pole, broken fence in front of someone's home, and a homeowner standing at the front door. Bless his heart, the first words that came out of his mouth were, Hey butthole, you knocked out my power, and I responded, I'm alright, thanks for asking. So that was a really pleasant wait for the first responders. It wasn't until first responders showed up and pointed out the drift marks in the road that I was made aware that I was less than 20 feet away from flipping over a guardrail that blocked a 120 feet ravine. I got MRSA in my left leg. Being a hardhead, I ignored my wife and daughters about the severity of it. I fell, couldn't get up without their help. They got me to the hospital in time to save my life. I don't remember anything until 10 days later, when I woke up with a below the knee amputation. Doing great now, and I'm grateful they made me go to the ER. Same for me, but sepsis. I just felt like hell because I'd recently given birth. That's also why I needed to sleep most of the day, and why I couldn't stand up, and why urgent care called the ambulance and said my BP was so low they didn't know how I walked in under my own power. Thank God I'm cheap, because the only reason I sought care was my husband telling me we'd have to go to the ER if I waited and felt worse. Spent a week in the hospital, didn't realize how close I came to death until I brought donuts for the staff who took care of me. The lead nurse saw me and said, You're walking? About two weeks after I asked for a divorce and moved out, I went to work and started to get this spasming pain in the middle of the abdomen. I self-diagnosed it as an ulcer from the stress of the divorce, kept drinking Pepto-Bismol, and worked my entire shift. I was staying with my sister, and when I got back after work, I was going to go to bed and call the doctor in the morning if it was still bothering me. She said, oh hell no, we're going to the immediate care right now. By the time they saw me, did some tests, transported me by ambulance to the hospital, triaged me in the ER, and prepped me for emergency surgery, my appendix had ruptured. They removed it and kept me on an antibiotic drip for almost a week, so I didn't become septic. It was almost 24 hours from the onset of the pain until the surgery, and if my sister hadn't dragged me there, I could very well have been too late. Unrelated. Last week, I was half asleep in a Benadryl coma, and I tripped over something, which caused me to lose my balance and violently fall into a wall. I slammed my shoulder into it, but if I had been closer to the wall, it could easily have broken my neck. I'm still freaked out about it. First time was when I found myself driving on black ice. The suction from a tractor trailer passing by spun my car around, and I landed nose down in a snow-filled ditch five feet from a bridge. Second time, got my brakes done on my car as part of regular maintenance. The next day, I was driving home from visiting my mother on a downhill slope that ended at a traffic light. Stepped on the brakes. Nothing. My foot went right to the floor. I blew through the red light at that intersection, going 80 kilometers per hour. Apparently, they forgot to bleed the lines. Third time, had a tumor growing in my colon, showed symptoms of it for years, which my doctors poo-pooed as PMS. When you're a physically fit 30-ish young woman, stomach and back pain can only be lady stuff, right? Symptoms got worse and worse. The pain was unbearable. Finally, my stomach started to bloat so much that I looked nine months pregnant. I went to my doctor and the ER during that week, and each time was turned away. Finally, on my second visit to the ER, I told them that if I didn't get help, I was getting in my car and driving off the nearest high bridge I could find. They decided that maybe I was worth an exam and an x-ray. Turns out the tumor had grown so large I had a 100% bowel obstruction. 
And because of that, the food I had eaten was rotting inside my body. Surgeon told me without intervention, I was at most 48 hours from death. The negligence of doctors over the years cost me several feet of colon, having to poop into a colostomy bag, and ongoing medical issues. There have been other incidents, but not as close. I feel like a cat, and I'm wondering what the next near miss will be before I run out of lives. I was at a small music festival with some friends and my then girlfriend. We were all tripping. It was her first time and things were going well. Few hours in someone hands me a vape pen. Naturally, I take a hit. Never been a problem before. But apparently, these crunchy van dwellers don't know how to properly source their shit. I don't know what's in a bootleg vape pen, but I know I'm wildly allergic to it. Suddenly, my ears were itchy, then my throat, then breathing got harder, then very hard. It was at this point I croaked at my girlfriend that we should find me some Benadryl. After 20 minutes of asking everyone we see best we got is an unlabeled pill bottle that someone said, I think the little ones are Benadryl. At this point, I'm wheezing and having trouble staying upright. We call 911 and 10 minutes later, what arrives but a guy in a truck who's been sent to inform us that an ambulance will not be coming. We're in the middle of nowhere, Georgia, and literally everyone is fricked up. We ask if he can lead us to the nearest ER, and he begrudgingly accepts. I think the fact I was turning blue earned me some sympathy. So we find the least fricked up person we can, and me and my girlfriend pile into his car, and the guy in the truck takes off flying down these dark, twisting country roads. We manage to get to the ER, pop some liquid dryal in an IV, and a few minutes later, I can breathe again. Thank God I was barely 26 and my parents' insurance still covered me. It wasn't the most scared I've ever been, but definitely the closest to death. Before we started asking for help, I considered just trying to sleep it off since the whole no oxygen thing was making me tired. Would have been a real bad way to end my girlfriend's first acid trip, waking up next to her dead boyfriend. When I was 12, my hometown's doctor misdiagnosed a testicular torsion as tummy pain and sent me back home despite my protests. My stubborn idiot parents believed him over me and berated me for overreacting when I kept complaining about the pain. Fast forward a week or so and my testes had died and necrosis was starting to spread and swell. The pain was unbelievable, like a thousand twisting knives across my whole body. I couldn't get up, walk, or even cry properly anymore. I wanted to die so the pain would stop. Parents finally took me to a big city doctor, and the talking to that they got from the doctors there was legendary. Apparently, testicular torsion was something that needs to be resolved within a day, if not less. They had me sitting on it for almost a week because God forbid they believed their own kid over that other doctor. And that's how I almost died of necrosis and became an eunuch at 12. Yay! Dang. I'm so sorry you had to go through that. I also had testicular torsion when I was 13, so I understand the pain. My mom was trying to get me to go to sleep, and I was like, you have no idea how much pain I'm in. We went to the ER, and I couldn't relax at all because of how much pain I was in, but because I kept throwing up, they just thought I had a stomach bug, and it's like, no, I don't, but luckily, my mom told them that I was still in a lot of pain, and they figured it out finally. I'm so sorry your parents didn't listen to you when they should have believed you, but I'm glad you pulled through. Most recently, getting pregnant. My baby was diagnosed with a congenital heart defect in utero, one that would likely kill him shortly after birth without intervention. A fun fact we learned during my pregnancy is that there are no pediatric cardiac surgeons in my state. I was perfectly healthy, except a lot of swelling. At 37 weeks, my husband and I drove four hours to the next state over to transfer care there for his birth and eventual surgery. I was incredibly sick, and the trip took us seven hours because we had to stop so much. I had a doctor's appointment the next morning, and my husband asked if I wanted to eat first, and I said no, I would rather eat after. I lived to regret those words because I got admitted from that doctor's appointment with Helpy syndrome. I wasn't allowed to eat because I was being prepared for emergency C-section. A few months ago, I had some heart attacks that culminated in a STEMI, Widowmaker heart attack, which caused cardiac arrest. 
My heart stopped beating for a couple of minutes. I had called an ambulance earlier that evening, so luckily I was in hospital when it happened and I was resuscitated by the doctors there. They started CPR immediately, and I'm told I had two shocks with the defibrillator paddles. When I came back alive and conscious, they transferred me to another hospital for emergency surgery. Being born. Doctor decided to pull me out while my mom had only been in the second stage of labor for like 20 minutes and I had barely descended. Placed the forceps wrong on my head, over my cheek, which left a nasty gash and a scar and yanked me out for anywhere up to 17 minutes. But we aren't sure because they didn't keep proper notes. My shoulder got stuck on my mom's pelvis, shoulder dystocia, and my collarbone was broken in the process of getting me out. I came out all bruised and blue and had to be resuscitated twice. I also had a hematoma on my head from the pressure of the forceps. My birth left me fully paralyzed in my left arm, and I had to have a 12-hour nerve graft surgery as a baby to give me a little bit of functioning back. I'm still permanently disabled though, and have 24-7 chronic pain. Yes, it was malpractice. Not me, but my husband. He woke up one night while I was at work, third shift, with heartburn. He tried to ignore it and just go back to sleep, but our son, six months old at the time, had been very fussy all night, which was unusual. He rolled over and just tried to keep quiet so the baby would soothe himself to sleep. About an hour before I was off, the baby suddenly started crying, like someone was beating him. My husband got up with the heartburn still going, but when he picked up the baby, he felt his chest just burst into agonizing pain. His mom came and got the baby, who quieted down all of a sudden and went back to being a happy baby. I rolled up, not even a minute later, and my husband was walking over to my car. His face went white, then yellow, with every heartbeat. I grabbed him so fast, tucked him into the passenger seat, and sped off to the hospital just down the road. As a thin, active man of 36, the triage nurse said it was probably a panic attack, and was he sure he wanted to be checked out? We were lucky that another nurse saw us losing our shit and came over with an ultrasound because my husband's blood pressure and everything else were reading normal. 100% blockage of his LAD artery, also called a Widowmaker. This type of heart attack has a 99% mortality rate because it's such a sudden death. He had undiagnosed diabetes, so it wasn't cholesterol, which is what they were looking for. It was calcium. He made it through. He's 44 now, and our son beats us up every day. So I didn't almost die in this story, but my dad thought I died, and he couldn't stop laughing to see if I was okay. We had a really steep downhill backyard. One day, my brother and my dad are riding a scooter, an old school one, with those big rubber wheels. Well, I come outside. I'm like, that looks like fun. Let me take a turn. Now I am the man Murphy's Law happens to be. I find the one divot on the way down, and I face planting to the ground, wind up with dirt all in my mouth. Now I'm kind of choking on myself while I'm laying there. After a few minutes, I get up, spit the grass, and I might add in tears. She looks at me and goes, thank God you're alive. I thought you died. I just couldn't stop laughing to see if you're okay. Brother and I were training for freediving. I blacked out at the bottom of a 12 foot deep pool. My brother dove down and pulled me out. Once he pulled me out, he called for help. No one came. But after a few seconds, I started breathing again on my own. I was 31 years old. My brother was 26 at the time. That was five years ago. I say that because people assume it was when I was a kid when I tell the story. 